Thanks for tuning in. You're watching Bourbon Battles. My name's Joe. What we're going to do for you today is we're going to take a blind envelope out of that drawer over there. We're going to randomly select it. There's a bunch of envelopes in there. Inside that, there's two little vials of whiskey, kind of like these dudes right here. There's two of those in there. We're going to pull them out. We're going to drink them blind. Why do we drink them blind, you might ask? Because here at Bourbon Battles, we don't give a rat's ass what's on the label. We just like good whiskey. We're going to evaluate them, and we're going to tell you which one we prefer over the other. Stick with us to find out. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Okay, as we get into it, like I said, I'm going to go over here in this uh, drawer, pull out an envelope, and see what it is. Let's check it out. Okay, we've got a random envelope here, folks. And this is how it works. I'm going to get into this bad boy right here. Inside, you'll find three things. An envelope. That's the answer key that tells us what we're going to be drinking. It is sealed. I have no idea. Don't know. Don't want to know. Two bottles here. Let's get a couple glasses. Go with our Sobro glasses right here. Number one. Number two. If I don't mess these up, get them in the wrong order. One. Give you a few notes. We don't like to do a lot of tasting notes. Well, because quite frankly, we think they're stupid. I don't taste what you taste, what your friend doesn't taste. You taste what you taste. Now, things are really, really prominent. We will talk about it a little bit because that's fair, right? Okay. Put that right there. Okay, we're going to get into it. As I start to get into this, I want to explain something to you real quick. The Staven Thief Society, you see their uh, website right there. Awesome, awesome educational company where you can take classes to learn more about bourbon, anywhere from $50 to $500, but it's not going to cost you that much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because of their Executive Bourbon Steward course, if you use this discount code right here, check that out, BBB15, you get 15% off. We've had several people that watch Bourbon Battles take that. Hey, let us know in the comments what you think about that, if you've taken it or if you've signed up to take it. I've taken it. I love the class. So let's get into these here. Wow. You guys know what we're drinking. You already saw it. You saw it when you clicked on this video. You probably see it now, depending on where we insert it here. Let me know in the comments who you think would win before you watch and see who I pick. Hmm. You know, there's different things we evaluate when we look at these. The nose, which is what I'm doing now the palate, which is tasting, the finish, what's left over, and of course the value. And I'm going to tell you who I think wins each of these and give an overall winner. Pretty easy on the nose to pick a winner. Yeah, maybe not as easy as I thought. Guess number two's got a lot of caramel on the nose. I'm going to give the nose to number two. Number two is going to win the nose. Of course, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is the palate. Let's check it out. Spicy. A lot of rye. I don't think it is a rye, but it's very, very high rye. It could be a rye. It could be a, a low rye rye, if you will. Definitely not like a 95.5 rye. Oh, well, it's really good. It's really good. Oh, yeah. On the palate, it's just, you get some sweetness, you get that rye spice i don't think it's a rye i think it's a high rye whiskey let's check out number two here which is what i picked on the nose so in theory that should translate to the palate we'll see 
Oh, it's delicious. Definitely, definitely number two is going to take the, my opinion, number two is better. I can tell right out of the gate on the palate. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Number one is amazing. Let's check out the finish here. Gosh, if number two is better on the pal, it's just by the thinnest of margins. And number one is better on the finish. So now I have to pick a winner here. This is not easy. We don't have ties. I'm actually going to put a drop of water in each of these and see how that affects it. Because that could actually, on these, are so close, it could be the tiebreaker. So what we do here is just one little drop. And that's going to interact with the whiskey to do some different things. Um, some people like to say it mimics an ice cube. Not really. You get a lot more water with an ice cube. This just opens it up and changes the whole profile. Oh. I actually prefer number one with a drop of water, and I very rarely say that kind of tames down that what I think is a very high rye spice. I do think these are both fairly high proof. They're not in the 130s or anything like that or probably not even maybe 120, 115, I don't know. I don't think water hurt at number two at all. Number one might get a little bit better than number two with a drop of water. That doesn't mean it's going to win. Here's what I'd say about these two whiskeys. If they're within $10 of each other, then this won't apply. But if one of these is drastically more expensive than the other, it's hands down the better one to buy of the two. If they're somewhere in the same neighborhood on price, then, uh, yeah, I've got to pick a winner here. And uh, it's tough. I'm going to say this is better but close. It's not a flip of a coin. I can distinctly pick a winner, pick a winner but it is so stinking close. These are both great whiskeys. Um, Drink either one of these any given day and be very happy. Either one of these can go to your guest. Hey, check out those Sobro glasses. That's cool, isn't it? You can serve these to anybody that's into whiskey. They'll love that. Um, no problem at all. And I'm going to go with, as a winner, let me just double check here. Before I pick a winner, I'll say, go out and buy these. You need to own these. If they're sub... If they're sub $90, you should own these. Um, maybe even sub $100. So, pick a winner. The winner is number two. By the thinnest of margins, these are both great whiskeys. Number two is the winner. So, let's see, see what we got here. And I might as well have a little number two. While we talk about it, gosh, I almost feel like I ought to just dump them together and do a little, uh, in, you know, blend. So good. So let's check this out. Number, here we go. See what we see. Number one that did not win is Wild Turkey Rare Breed. You see that on your screen now. Number two that did win is 1792 Foolproof. Let me grab those bottles so we can talk about them. Okay, here we are. I have the bottles. You've all seen this one. This is everywhere. Everybody talks about how great this is, how underrated it is, all that stuff. 
you know that it's not that expensive. This one, 1792 foolproof, is kind of in the same boat. Very underrated in my opinion. I've seen more store picks of these than I have the regular expression. Uh, I'd be curious. I, I feel like in my head, and I have multiple foolproof store picks, and I love them. I love them. I love them. I love them. It's some of that whiskey that stays back there in the back because I don't want to drink it because I don't want to run out. Excuse me. I don't want to run out. Um, it's one of those things I need to drink more of. Same with this. This is something I just don't think of often enough. You know, Wild Turkey Rare Breed is an amazing, amazing expression. Uh, I think in my mind, at least, I'd have to do it blind that I prefer this. I'm sorry, I prefer the Russell's Reserve Single Barrel over this. Um, of course, I'm a huge Wild Turkey 101 fan. Uh, I'm a fan of a lot of the things they do. Uh, I think this would actually give some of the Russell's Reserve 13 a run for its money. Man, that's so good. So let's take a look at this. Wild Turkey Rare Breed is made by Wild Turkey in Kentucky. If you've never been to Wild Turkey, it's a cool place. A lot of times, Jimmy Russell's sitting down there signing bottles on these little scooters. It's a cool. I have not done a tour there. I've been there, hung out on the grounds, had a cocktail, had a drink, had a pour, whatever it was. Uh, checked it out. Really, really cool. Uh, was not lucky enough to see Jimmy Russell there, but I know he's there a lot signing stuff. Jimmy Russell is the master distiller over there. This comes in at 116.8 proof, and this is a blend. This is not a... So I want to say, and I'll put it on the screen, that this is a blend of like 8, 10, and 12-year-old barrels, something like that. I think we're going to find about the full proof. It's about 8 years old. So if you take the average of what's in here, it's... I guess it could average out to that. I know there's younger whiskey in here. Um, as far as I know, when it until it comes to the uh, master wild turkey masters, keep everything's the same mash bill, right? The wild turkey 101 all the way to the Russell's 13 rare breed Russell single barrel. And by the way, those Russell single barrels are, you know, in my opinion, out of this world, they're better than most of the Russell's reserve 13 year. So on to the winner. This is what I picked. Um, this is a bit of a unicorn. Uh, you're in a bourbon business long enough. You're going to find this. Um, it's pretty cheap when you do find it. If you find it at retail, like I say, I think I have three or four store picks up there. They're amazing. 125 proof, um, compared to what did I say? This was 116. So it is, it's higher proof. And I think it drank lighter than this so that's a, another big accolade to this this is made by the 1792 barton distillery that's owned by sazerac who's the same people that own buffalo trace and all that some of my favorite whiskey 1792 sweet wheat comes out of this outfit um you heard me talk about sweet wheat a lot it's a weeded bourbon it's fantastic it's a much lower proof but this is their full proof their 12 year old expression is fantastic their small batch is something that i almost never remember that I even have to get a pour of it. I'm going to have a pour of it tonight. So this stuff is awesome. Hopefully you can get it where you're at. And if you can't, this is great. This is right there. Um, I was surprised how much that rye came through on the wild turkey, although wild turkey is a very high rye mash bill. So it's fantastic whiskey. Hey, there's only so many bourbons that are worth hunting around for, and it's not Pappy Van Winkle, and it's not Weller. Antique 107, maybe. This right here, I'll take that over a Weller foolproof any day. Now, I, I know we're comparing apples to oranges, right? Weller foolproof is weeded. This is not weeded. This is a this is a rye mash bill. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's better whiskey. Um it's really, really good. So check that out. Let me know in the comments what you want to see go in the barrel, in the bucket, in the blind drawer, whatever it is. We'll get them in there if we've got them. Um, if we don't, we'll try to get them. Check it out. Let me know what you think about this stuff. Uh, and I guess and I can get a lot of comments to say, hey, that rare breed's my favorite whiskey. Hey, here's what we want to take away from this. Drinking whiskey's supposed to be fun. Do it with your friends. Do it responsibly. But whatever you do, don't drink and drive. See you next time. Do the watermelon crop.